Hello, I'm Trent, AKA O Trademark here, and I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, get 100 million damage in the new tournament mode. It is boss waves only, uh, no traits. And this is, in my opinion, the best way of getting 100 million damage. I've tried a lot of different strategies. I will say there are several viable strategies, but this appears to be the easiest one. So you run double farm, you run Itachi, Poochie, Wendy, and of course, of course, the man who will not leave the meta, he will not be denied his spot on your team. The one and only uh, Aizen is here again. Honestly, I'm getting so sick of using Aizen. I feel like they tried to do this boss wave only mode to actually... Uh, to actually make it easier uh, for or kind of diversify the meta, but I think they failed and I'll, I'll maybe I'll talk about why I think that is here in a bit. But essentially the first thing that you need to do, uh, whoops, I actually made a mistake here, but it's okay, I should be fine. Usually you wanna place three units down, three Itachis down right at wave three. I place them down on wave four. I should still be okay, but uh, usually you want to place those down at wave three so that you kill the phantoms and then you can actually focus on the shield units before you even have any problem uh, leaking. But uh, let's see if we have any issues actually maxing. Once you have your three Itachis placed, you should be able to just focus on your upgrades. Try and use as much of your money into your farm units every single round. That is ideal. And uh, I like to max out my Bulma first and then worry about my speed carts after so all right so let's talk about the units uh, like I said uh, for some reason even in boss mode where technically you would think units like Aki uh, units like Levi you know single target boss damage type units would be the best on boss mode the problem is how they've implemented tournaments. So since it's most damage rather than highest wave that you can uh, you can reach, players focus on uh, towards the end when you're leaking. Players basically focus on just flooding as many units into the map as possible, and then once a bunch of units are on the map, they just focus on getting a bunch of full AOE units. So that's why S Death and Aizen are so popular in tournament mode is because you just let the floodgates open, a bunch of units come through, and then you just deal a bunch of damage in full AOE. And that's how you get really high scores. That's usually how it's been for tournament mode. And even in boss mode, because you can let five bosses out at a time, it's actually still the most efficient way, unfortunately, to actually uh, kind of do this map. So I personally don't, not a super huge fan of it. I wish instead of doing this, they would make it the highest round that you could go to. And I wish you could entirely pause and only let one boss through it at a time um, and not flood a bunch of bosses out at once. I think that would be ideal. That would mean that you, you know, it would benefit players to actually, uh, be strategic and which which units to, to bring how your targeting modes are set up things like that i think it would be much cooler uh if we did something like that now i can't see this itachi where's he at uh okay right there now once your uh, farms are maxed so you should max your farms around wave seven uh and then you're going to max out your itachis after that it's a pretty boring initial start to this uh to this strategy but Itachi just does so much damage. Keep in mind, you do need to have his Mangekyo Eye Relic on him. So uh, you'll have to go farm that if you don't already have that. And it's really hard to find a replacement for Itachi. I'm not sure if there is any unit which could replace Itachi. I played around with like Power plus Denji and Denji does a lot of damage uh, if you have Chainsaw Man or, or Denji as a unit. So you could potentially run power. You have to run power with him though. So it takes up two slots. And because of that, you're gonna have to drop one of these other units. So you're either gonna have to drop Aizen, which can cause you a bunch of problems, um, or you know, uh, you're gonna drop it, it. Well, you're gonna drop like two of these units, obviously. So um, it's just kind of a more uncomfortable way to do things. Plus you're not gonna run Wendy. I'm not even sure what you run like Erwin or if you just run another damage unit. 
um, because all of these units kind of have their very specific purpose in the strategy. Essentially, Itachi is our early wave clear and he's our primary damage dealer. Aizen is only there for his ability and at the end of the game when we flood in the bosses onto the map, he's there for the full AoE damage and he's what's going to actually really give us a lot of damage towards the end. And then uh, we have Poochie for the Poochie ability. That's again just to flood the damage in the later waves. And then finally we have the Wendy who's going to be buffing our Aizen and our Itachi giving a, uh, giving our damage units a lot more damage there. So well, uh, now, uh, yeah, like I said, replacements, Aizen's really hard to replace. You could maybe go with like someone like a Boros, another damage dealer, but you want them to be magic so that they double buff off of Itachi. And I tried running like Sasuke. Sasuke works decently, but uh, you cannot uh, you cannot stun bosses. Uh, so like the Rainbow Fire Mage is just going to run right through you. For that reason, uh, you could run something like a Jotaro for... You can freeze units, but the freeze can interfere. Uh, yeah, like the freeze is probably not going to be as good as what Aizen's going to provide to you. So um, there's a few options that you could run. Like I said, you could run Denji plus power. You could run Jotaro instead of Aizen. You can run Gojo instead of Poochie. There's a few substitutions, but I think this is the easiest sub uh, setup by far. And you'll notice here we're at wave 18. We're almost going to max out all of our Itachis. There we go. We have all three Itachis maxed. Now we can place our Aizens. And I'm going to place my Aizens right here on the fountain. Now, if you have very long range on your Aizens, you can move them a little bit further, closer to your Itachis. Uh, and they should still be able to hit here. But the main thing is that you can hit this entire circular path. So depending on your range is where you're going to actually place these Aizens. And then you're going to put your Wendy's right in between the three or the two, it your Itachis and your Aizens. So you buff both of them. And then you're going to put your Poochie just somewhere down here so you can activate his ability when you need to. Okay. Next up, I'm going to max out my eyes. Well, not max out my Poochie. I'm going to get Poochie to his time acceleration ability right here. This is very important for the later waves to actually be able to deal damage. And there's two really, well, there's three crucial rounds that you need to understand about the strategy. Wave 27, you need to turn off auto skip. Wave 29, you're going to summon in a rainbow fire mage like this. And these things, they, they are going to come out of here like a bat out of hell. They can't be slowed. They can be frozen, but they can't be stunned. Like I said, they just run right through your units and they're very tanky. Uh, so the wave 29 and then wave 31 again as well. Uh, so you have to be aware of those units and uh, how to actually counter them. Once you have Poochie at time acceleration, we're going to start upgrading our Aizens. I like to just go up to uh, so basically get them to full AoE. And then I just upgrade one upgrade at a time for each of them. That's the most uh, value efficient way of doing it. But if you want to, towards the end, you can kind of balance your money and just do the most, uh, the best upgrade for each individual unit. Like if you have 25,000, it's better to upgrade a unit that has a 25,000 upgrade, an Aizen that has a 25k upgrade instead of a 20k upgrade. All right, so here we go. Uh, like I said, towards wave 27 is where we're going to actually have to start being actively playing. Right for up to this point, it's pretty boring. It would be great if we had a times two game pass or a times three game pass for moments like this, wouldn't it be? Yes, it's something that the community has asked for for a long time, and we have not received it yet. Times two speed for everyone, times three game pass for the people that want to pay for it. Please, just like All Star Tower Defense, they've done it right there. Uh, but like I said, we're just going to do this, and then we can start popping our Wendy's for buffs. But the important thing is that we want to. Uh, by wave 27, turn off our, our auto skip in the settings. Unfortunately, there's not like a little icon up here. It would be great if there was an auto skip icon up here next to effects and stuff. So you could quickly turn auto skip waves on and off. I'm going to turn this off on wave 26, but we actually want to skip all the way up to wave 27. So what I'm going to do here is as soon as I see the yes over on the right hand side, I'm gonna skip to 27. I just do that so I don't accidentally forget because 
if you leave auto skip on and you get to wave 29 and that rainbow fire mage comes out without you clearing these bosses you will lose so just keep that in mind it is something that we need to be aware of and we need to start buffing our units to in order to clear out all these bosses that we're going to have right here in a row we need to actually start buffing our units so the way that you do that is just watch this little the little vertical lines that are on wendy as soon as they darken then you can just go ahead and pop your next wendy and uh, you just select them. If you have three of them, you can basically have a constant buff going. So you wanna make sure that you're always buffing and then you're also using any extra money that you have for uh, upgrading your Aizens while we're doing this as well. Okay, so I'm just watching for the buff, the lines, as soon as it darkens, there we go, I can pop it again. Then we wait on the next Wendy. And again, so right now, uh, our Itachis are doing most of the damage. They're gonna clear out all of these units here. As long as we buff them, they'll do their job. And then we'll be able to focus entirely on the uh, the Rainbow Fire Mage that comes out on wave 29 and sell him. And you can see how, I mean, this strategy is not very uh, macro intensive. You literally just got a Wendy buff. Um, there's very little to do once, because you're slowing down, you're not auto skipping the wave. It's, uh, it's pretty slow paced at this point in the map, but it's gonna speed up here. As soon as we clear wave 28, things will pick up quite a bit. And, uh, oh, one more thing I wanna talk about. If you don't have very good base stat rolls on like your Itachi and your Aizen, this might actually be very hard for you to clear these bosses out, even if, with the Wendy buffs and everything. So just keep that in mind. If you're struggling to actually get to this point, a lot of I noticed a lot of players last time when I did a tutorial like this, they were like, ah, I followed the instructions exactly like you did it, and I could only get you know half as much as you did. That's typically either because of your curses or your base stat rolls. Uh, curses, you can just go farm more cursed wombs and get better curse on your units. Unfortunately, for the, uh, for the, um, well, hold on. Why are we not killing this water mage faster? Okay. I think I misbuffed there one time while I was talking. And, uh, so we're a little bit unbuffed here, but we should kill that water mage. Hopefully as long as our Itachis get a couple more hits on it and then we can buff here there we go okay so we have a still mage coming in as long as this water mage dies we're chilling and you can see how much burn damage i mean the ticks just come in dealing a ton of damage there it goes and then we can come back here and get this these units buffed um okay it darkens we buff and we're gonna clear out this uh, entire still mage. Look, we still have seven minutes left. We're chilling. We're gonna lose. Well, the the fire mage that comes in at 31 is very very hard to kill. So unless you have very very good curses and stat rolls, you're not going to kill it. And that's when we're gonna pop our poochie buff. But we do not want to pop pop our poochie buff prior to that. So we need to make sure that we're constantly Wendy buffing so we deal enough damage to all the bosses here prior to the rainbow fire mage coming in. Uh, the Rainbow Fire Mage, basically see this, 30 seconds, it's going to start the next round whether we skip or not. So I don't know why that is. I mean, why have like a turn auto skip off if they're just going to send the waves at you regardless? I wish they would just let you ut utilize your time and not start force start the next wave. But it is what it is. Whoops, I forgot the buff there. That could cost me. You want to always buff immediately after you actually lose that. Okay, we're killing the Still Mage pretty fast here though. So hopefully... Uh, the rainbow fire mage is going to come in here but hopefully we can clean up this uh steel mage before long uh there we go uh oh yeah we also want to make sure that we're you spending our money and then we're buffing okay so this is a very very crucial wave you need to kill this rainbow fire mage if you do not kill the rainbow fire mage before she pass or before it passes by your base you're going to lose like i said because there's not and really anything you can build at the back to cover it you can try and turn auto skip on and or, you know skip waves and get yourself some money and build like a poochie back there but it's kind of scuffed how it works so the easiest way is just to make sure you have enough damage here you're buffing your units and then you just kill it and that way we can take out this next boss on wave 30 and we can just focus everything on this water mage. So again, we're just gonna do the exact same thing. As soon as we're in range, 
We're going to start buffing our units as soon as the Water Mage is in range. And we're also going to spend our money. Let's see, what do we have? 20,000, 30,000, and 15,000. Let's let's get Ultra Fragor there. And then, ooh, 30,000 almost. Uh, okay, let's do this 20. Okay, so she's in range now. We're going to start buffing. And wave 31 is where the rainbow fire mage comes out with a ton of health and it's extremely, extremely difficult to kill it. Like I said, unless you have insane curses and trait rolls and all really good relic rolls as well. So my relic on uh, Itachi is awful. I've crafted three and my best one was 2.8%. So I've just had really awful luck with the relics. Um, hopefully you get a better one there for yourself. Uh, it's 2 to 5% on the fire damage roll, so you want as close to 5% as possible. And then just keep buffing right here. We're not going to pop Poochie, remember, until we get to 31. And I'm going to show you what I think is the most efficient way to get 100 mil is, uh, is by popping it a little bit later rather than earlier. So let's keep our units buffed. We should be able to kill this Water Mage. Uh, she's taking a lot of damage here. And then 31 is where things are going to get hectic. So the things that you need to be aware of on wave 31, at some point you need to pop Poochie ability. At some point you need to pop uh, Aizen's Kanzen Simon ability. At some point you're going to need to be constantly buffing. Like Well, throughout the whole round, you're going to want to be constantly buffing your units. It is a quite... So up to this point, it's been quite boring. But in this these final rounds, things are going to get really hectic. Not to mention that you're also going to want to actually spend your money here on these buffs. So let's see, 34,000. So we're just going to upgrade this one in the middle. And then here we go. The Rainbow Fire Mage is coming in. As soon as we have the uh, the Darken, we're going to buff again. Now, I'm not going to pop Poochie ability. If I thought I could kill it, I would pop a Poochie ability right here. But I don't think we can. So, oh, I forgot to tell you. Auto skip on. Yes, we need to flood the map. Flood the map. So here we go. We auto skip on. We're upgrading our stuff. We're popping Wendy when we can. We'll check a look. Wendy, as soon as she comes down here. Okay, it's dark. We pop it again. All right, so now this Rainbow Fire Mage, we're not dealing enough damage. It's definitely going to leak. You can see how tank it is. It's got like insane amount of damage. I can't tell what that number is right now, but I'm going to focus on just Wendy buffing. And then uh, what I'm actually going to do is turn my camera a little bit here so I can see when that uh, Rainbow Fire Mage gets towards the end. And what I want to do is actually pop... Uh, let's see, 25, here we go. What I want to do is actually pop Pucci ability when two of the slow bosses are in range of my units right here. So we'll, I'll show you guys here in a little bit to stack up. Uh, okay, the Rainbow Fire Mage is over there. Are we darkened? Darkened. Okay, so we just pop a Wendy ability. And now I think I'm going to pop a Pucci ability right about now. Okay, I'm going to grab uh, one of the Aizens and run over here just to make sure that we actually bounce this unit off here. Uh, it can walk all the way up to right about there, and that's where you want to bounce. So I'm going to prepare it, and then right about here, boom, bounce. And now I'm running back, running back. So I've activated Aizen ability, I'm running back, I'm going to pop Wendy ability, boom. Okay, now we have the Poochies going, we have everything going, here we go. You see 95 million, 96 million, here we go. As long as we get enough bounces over here, we should surpass 100 million. Yep, there's another bounce, and there we go. So now we've... Uh, 98 99 please one more oh whoops wendy wendy did we do it oh <laughs> oh so just barely barely over the threshold of 100 million now i made some mistakes obviously uh i wasn't constantly buffing i also didn't yeah, upgrade my eisens here because i was trying to talk and explain the process so there was definitely missed potential if you can kill that wave 31 rainbow fire mage then that's where you can get potentially up to like 110 120 maybe even i've seen a screenshot of 130 mil i don't know if it was legit or if they use the strategy but i do can see it being possible to actually get up there depending on how you like upgrade things and whatnot so yes then you would essentially run this you would pop uh poochie to kill the wave 31 and then you would just focus on upgrading your aizens it would give you a like an extra 10 to 15 seconds of of play time before you actually another rainbow fire mage runs through here and kills you but anyways guys hopefully this is helpful for you 
Uh, I do feel like there are going to be some strategies that can get up into the 130 range. So if you have any suggestions or tweaks on the strategy, feel free to share your suggestions in the comments below. Anyways, guys, Malo Alpito, thanks for watching. Peace. I'm out of here.